Welcome to Assist My Team Small and Medium Business Solutions. In this demonstration, we will explore the administrative features of Team Timesheet for Outlook and SharePoint. Once you have installed the Manager tool for Team Timesheet, open Outlook and you would be prompted with a project data source settings. The project data source is nothing but a simple SharePoint list that will be created under your SharePoint site by this Manage Real tool. For this demonstration, I will use our local SharePoint 2010 site. But you can also use SharePoint site hosted on the web or in the cloud. Here, I will enter the SharePoint site URL and my credential for the site as well. You will see that all the available subsites are displayed in this tree control. Now all that is needed is to select one of the site where the project settings list will be created. Once created, all project data and global settings will be stored in this list. All members will be then able to access to projects and other data through the Team Timesheet Client Tool and Outlook. You can find all the central administrative settings under the Backstage view of Outlook 2010. The first step in the configuration process is to decide which project fields are to be deployed to all members for collecting timesheet and other project deliverables. You can do that from the Fields option settings. Here the administrator has the provision to customize the titles of the project, activity, and custom fields to suit their line of business and logic. The changes in the titles here are reflected to the Team Timesheet Client tool, that is, in the Outlook toolbars and ribbons, as well in Summary Reports and Statistics. For example, the first drop-down field can be titled as Client, and the administrator can fill up the names of all their clients for which projects are contracted for. For the second custom drop-down list, I can specify it as Region, and for the third, let us say, Service Level. You can use up to 10 custom fields for extracting additional project or activity-related data when individual member prepare their timesheet from within the Outlook task or appointment. Four of these fields are available as administrator-defined drop-down lists, which are listed in here. The next four fields are static fields and can be used to store any textual data, whereas the last two custom fields can be used for capturing currency or decimal values. The project and activity fields are always deployed to all members, but the custom fields are optional. You can deploy as many number of custom fields depending on your reporting need. You can also set certain fields as required, such that individual member cannot submit their timesheets if any of these mandatory fields are not filled. Lastly, for drop-down fields, you can mark it choosable so that in Outlook, each team member is allowed to choose their own relevant projects or custom field values to work with. Let us see how the deployed fields appear for each member in their Outlook calendar and task folder. The second part of the administrative configuration is to map Outlook appointment and task fields to share appoint fields. For instance, in this appointment fields mapping setting, I can specify the particular share appoint list to which all members in my organization can publish their timesheets from Outlook. All I need to do is to simply choose a share appoint field from this drop down and map it to the corresponding appointment or project field. I can also select the new list field from the drop down to create a new field directly in this particular share appoint list to map with an Outlook or project field. This saves you time from creating it manually in the share appoint site.
Similarly, in the task fields mapping setting, I can perform the mapping between Outlook task fields and SharePoint fields. Now, let us explore the team members list settings. The project data source needs to maintain the detail of each member that would be reporting to SharePoint. The member name and email address are mandatory fields and should be unique for each member in the list. Most likely, you might already have contact details of the members in the Exchange Global Address list. You can use the Import button to display the address book and select those contacts that you want to import. The member name, email and the department fields would be then automatically filled in the grid. You can grant administrative rights to certain members to be able to view statistics and create reports on all submitted timesheets. Such members can also be allowed to add their own projects and activities to the central project data source from within their Outlook. From time to time, supervisors and managers might need to remind a particular member to report their project deliverables such as timesheets to SharePoint. You can do that easily by clicking the corresponding notify button to send out the alert email instantly. This notification email can be customized using the templates manager. Now, let us explore the projects list. Here you can add projects and their related information, such as project manager, hourly rate, timeline, and outlook color code. There is no limit as to the number of projects that can be set up in the system. When you add a new project, you can assign a project manager from among the members list. To specify the project start or finish date, just double-click the particular cell, and it would pop up this date picker. The start and finish date can be used for enforcing timeline validity when individual member tries to report timesheets to SharePoint. You can specify a color code for a particular project by clicking here to show the color picker. You can select from one of the 25 colors that are supported in Outlook. Lastly, Administrator can click the corresponding Notify All Members button of a particular project to send out an email notification to all or selected members to remind submission of their timesheets to SharePoint. You can customize this email template in the Templates Manager. This is the Activities List Settings. Think of an activity as a subpart of a project. From the second column, you can specify the particular project this activity belongs to. Each activity can also be assigned a coordinator, which you can choose from the drop-down members list. Likewise in the projects list, administrator can click the corresponding notify all members button of a particular activity. This will send out an email notification to all or selected members to remind for timesheet submission from Outlook to SharePoint. The administrator can customize this email template. Let us now explore some of the settings administrator can customize for the entire team members. With these reporting options, I can control on how individual team member works with projects in Outlook and how they report their timesheets and other deliverable to SharePoint. For example, I can enable the first option to allow all members to prepare their timesheets in the default Outlook calendar only. What it means is, the project toolbar or ribbon won't be available in other calendar folder except for the default calendar of that primary mailbox. With this option enabled, it would allow members to revise existing timesheet in Outlook and resubmit it to SharePoint. As you can notice here, a new button with the update caption appears in the project toolbar. This feature helps members to report their incomplete timesheet, while at the same time giving the flexibility to resubmit or update the same reported timesheet in due course.
I can also allow members withdrawal permission of reported timesheet and other deliverable directly from Outlook with this option. A new button, Withdrawal Report, is visible when you select or highlight an Outlook item that had been published earlier. This withdrawal feature comes handy when members want to start over their timesheet without actually deleting the existing appointment item in Outlook. Now these four options are regarding expired projects or activities. A project is assumed expired if the end date has lapsed. Likewise, an activity is assumed expired if the due date has lapsed. You can enable these options so that you can prevent members from working on expired projects and submitting their timesheets and expenses to SharePoint. If you have a minimum work time requirement for accepting timesheet, and other deliverables that are submitted by member to share a point, you can set it in minutes here. You can check this option to include attachments when timesheet is published to share a point from Outlook. For example, here we have an appointment with two PDF attachments. If I publish this timesheet to the share a point, these attachments will also get published in SharePoint. Additionally, when member reports their timesheet to share a point, an actual copy of the Outlook item in .msg file can be included as an attachment. For example, let us try publishing this particular timesheet to share a point. Lastly, you could configure a particular public folder where a copy of the reported Outlook item will be placed when it is being submitted to share a point by individual member. So, as we have seen, we can control how all members work with projects in Outlook and streamline the reporting process for the entire team. Now let us explore the advanced options available. For calculating total cost, for billing and payroll purposes, administrator can use the project rate, or the activity rate, or the member rate. The total cost is calculated automatically when member reports their timesheets to share a point. By default, the rate for project is used. With these three options, you can enforce project and activity timeline on appointment or task item for all members in Outlook. If this first option is enabled, when member tags an appointment or task item in Outlook, the start date of the timesheet would be automatically updated to that of the project's start date. Likewise for the end time and due date of the timesheet. For example, here we have this appointment from 19th to the 24th of December, 2010. If I tag the BBC Tech as the project, notice that the start time has changed to the the 5th of January, 2011, and end time has changed to the 25th of January, 2011. Let us verify if this is indeed the start date of the project in the projects list. And yes, it is. Now, let us explore the email notifications that are available. Team Timesheet offers a whole lot of notification options for different events of project management and tracking. Automatic emails are sent out directly when a relevant event occurs and the whole exercise is transparent to their users. From within this notification options, administrator can enable or disable specific automated email notification. The email templates for these notifications can be altered with the templates manager Modifying a particular email template is made much easier with the what you see is what you get editor. Here are the list of placeholder variables that you can insert into your email template to get personalized and interactive content. We have only explore a fraction of the administrative settings in this demonstration. For more thorough detail, please refer to the administrative help manual. This concludes this video tutorial on configuring administrative settings in Team Timesheet for Outlook and SharePoint.